describe or you explain. Now, I was asked a question this week, last week. Uh, a student said to me, her supervisor said, but at a doctoral level, how can you just describe? And I didn't agree with the supervisor because these are the three categories of what you do in research, the three activities of research, storing, describing, or explaining. The extent to which you describe, or what you describe, and how you describe, that is what gives you a doctoral degree. But it's not the fact that you are exploring, or explaining, or describing. It is the extent and the depth to which you do that, how you do that, and what you, what you are describing that warrants a doctoral degree. So if somebody says to you, but for a PhD you can't just describe, then the answer is, but I identified a gap here. I'm going to fill that gap uniquely, plus my research methodology will be justifiable. I will be valid and reliable in most cases. So I can't describe, explore, or explain it's how I'm going to do that after I've identified the gap that warrants a PhD. Okay. Uh, no, I want to show you that. So now we're going to start on what I should have done this morning, but I switched the slides around to show you the problems with research first. Research design. And then I'm going to go into research methods as well and just give you an overview so that by tomorrow we'll talk about data and specific techniques. So what is research design? I said earlier, this is the overall plan. This is what the architect does when they look at the overall plan of the building. And when that is done, the contractor or the engineer will come and they will put the building blocks in how to achieve that. So the one is like strategic and the other one is operational and gives meaning to the design. So here are some definitions. Research design is the plan or the protocol for a particular piece of research. It's a map of how the various elements are interrelated. So it tells you which are the elements. Remember I said every one of the items in a research proposal becomes a chapter or part of a chapter later. So these are the elements. So combining the elements will give you the maximum validity. What does validity do? It makes sure that you keep on topic, that you are studying what it is that you want to study. So it ensures that the research question can be answered in a logical way, given all the resources, the resource constraints that you might have, financial, time, etc. Although you are not allowed to say that you have no money and you have no time. As a student, those things roll off anyway. So if you say, one of the constraints of this study was a lack of time, or I had no money, not going to work. You got to report on everything other than that because you're a student, they discriminate against you. Research design is a plan or a blueprint of how you intend conducting the research. It explains the logic behind the research methods, the research techniques, as well as the research instruments. So it holds everything together. It's the broad picture. And the research problem determines the type of research design to be used, i.e., that circle of mind at the heart of all of that lies the research question statement problem. That tells you what the paradigm is going to be. You don't decide, I only do quantitative work, or I don't like quantitative work, so I'm going to conduct a qualitative study, no matter what. It's what you want to do <coughs> that will tell you how you're going to do that. So a student with me will always start with, so what is it that you want to do? What is your ideal state that you want to do? And why do you want to do that? And when we've dealt with that, later on I say, now that we're clear, and I agree with you, this is at a doctoral level and it's doable, and it's significant enough as research, how are we going to do that? But that, because, that comes later. Don't confuse how with what and why. Sorry. So research design, the essentials of research design are, you need an activity and a time-based plan. These days, we throw away the time-based plan. You no longer really need you to say, I would finish chapter one in August and chapter two in September, because we all know it's not going to happen. 
Mm -hmm. Rather than just blatantly lying there, this is leave that one out. But the activities, what you're going to do, that should be in your research design. So put that one in. And the plan is based on your research question. I see internationally they don't really so much focus on the research statement or the research problem. They, in all cases, just call it a research question. I was at the Academy of Management in Orlando recently, and there wasn't a single one of the almost 9,000 participants from all over the world when they presented their research that didn't write their research as a research question. But I think that's just because they got used to it. The reality is you can phrase this as a question, a problem, or a statement. And I do believe uh, if you can phrase it naturally as a question, then you're leaving it open either. So keep your choice between all three, but you'll see a lot of textbooks will talk about the research question as though you always have to have a research question. I, I don't agree with that. I think sometimes phrasing it as a research problem because that's really what you're doing here is fine. Or a statement is fine, but textbooks will make you think you have to have a research question. So it gives you an outline of everything that you want to do, which is different from what a research methodology is. So they are in both. So by the time you do your chapter on the research methodology, which will lie here, you have done the research design here, and you're now into execution. So the research design is holistic. It focuses on the end product and how all these elements fit together. The research problem or the question is central, and it's the overall logic. If you go into the research <coughs> methodology, it focuses on the specific processes and the tools and the methods that you're going to use. So these are tasks. It's detailed, it's detailed. So call the chapter here research method because by the time you get to the chapter here, you are into execution. This is a research method chapter. But your research method chapter will start with a section about research design because it's the broader thing. And then you bring that into the definition of research method and you choose a paradigm and you justify why and then within that paradigm, you will choose specific activities, which I'll show you now. So here are the elements, the five components that go into research. Before I show them to you, why don't you just all stand up and stretch your legs? 